Hey, hey! Welcome to another installment of Digital Disappointments Numoria Tutorial. I am Susan Gumpo, or Captain Gumpo, or Brad, or a variety of different things, depending which of our segments you watch. And we're going to continue where I left off last time with Nomoria. Um, left off at a fairly important point, dealing with the military situation. Now, when you go into the military area, you start out, your overview has no squads, your enemies tab is empty, and so on. Nothing is filled up. So what you'll want to do at the earliest possible stage, uh, the first day or two after you start and you've got just your basic setup, you know, the farm and uh, pen for your yaks and whatnot, you go in here, under the squads tab, you want to set up a new squad. Let's go. Uh, worm-like quacks is what they're called. Formar formation type. By default you'll have a basic formation, which means it'll fill each of the slots with a basic soldier configuration. What that means is, uh, let's see, position. Basic soldier, they start out with uniform of plate mail. I'm going to recommend that you set that to none, because your guys will be lopsided. You'll have one person who has a suit of copper armor and the rest of them are naked. And it'll be a while before you have the resources and facilities to make more armor. And you'll actually get better benefits from having all of them not equipped armor or weapon at first. Um, if you go with no armor and you set their perk to Way of the Gnome, the tooltip says, increased attack speed, attack damage, dodge chance, and dodge rate when no armor or weapon is equipped. So early on, this will make your gnomes fairly effective fighters without you having to piss around with making blacksmiths and weaponsmiths and armorsmiths, making all the pieces, because it's not just a matter of tell your weaponsmith to make a sword and he goes and pounds an ingot until you get a sword. You've got to make the straps to hold the armor together, you've got to make the, the haft and the blade and then assemble the pieces, so there is a fair amount of work involved in getting to the workshops and then getting from the workshops to having the actual equipment. And you've got to do that for, you know, a half a dozen guys or four guys, whatever you decide to do it for. Keep your life simple at first. Uniform none, perk with gnome, makes them a lot more effective in combat with less tools. If they lose sight of the target, by default they will chase to the last known position. It's not a bad thing to leave on. Um, maintain distance is only relevant once you've got to the point of giving them ranged weapons. I highly recommend retreat if bleeding, and with that what they'll do is they'll, they'll run back if they're injured to the point of, of bleeding, which means they could bleed out and die, they'll retreat and bandage themselves or they'll retreat and get someone to bandage them. Um, retreat to equip uniform and refill ammo. Those will become relevant later once you've actually got dedicated soldiers, if, if you decide to go that way. I don't often go that way, but it really depends on your, your particular preferences. Assist squad leader means that they will always target whoever their squad leader targets. This can give them a distinct advantage because they can take down an enemy much quicker. Instead of nickel and diming two or three different guys, they're nickel and diming the same guy, you know, 5, 10 damage over and over and over, take them down much quicker. So that's another good one to have enabled. Okay. Once you've got your basic soldier configured the way you like it, it doesn't have to be this way, there are other perks in here that are useful. Um, there's a couple that I looked, uh, looked at here. Higher chance of hitting legs and feet is knock them down. Um, where was the other one? Disarm is not a bad one. Aim for the eyes can also be handy. So there's there's a few of them in here that are interesting. Uh, sneaky. If um, your guys are equipped with light or no armor and a melee weapon, this is a good one. This is a good one to think about because you can have five guys in a squad all set to assist the squad leader. And so no matter which one the enemy is focused on, the other four are getting a, a nice bonus because they uh, <laughs> they aren't being targeted. It's it's really kind of a dirty con dirty combination, but a lot of times I'll default to Way of the Gnome, and I'll 
just basically train up everybody so that they're all pretty decent brawlers and go from there. Uh, your formation will have basic formation by default. That's uh, that's a good one to to have just everybody put into it first because it doesn't require you to do any of the setup or anything. To set up new positions and new uniforms, you can do that. I can show you how to do that later, but for right now, let's work with what we've got. So we'll we'll just leave basic formation as uh, five basic soldiers. Which oh, if you ever happen to get this. Close the window out, open it back up, and it makes the tooltip go away. Um, as I was saying, basic formation will work with what we've got. So five basic soldiers, which we can figure over here. And for their perk, if you go with keep your eyes open, it gives them increased visibility per person in the squad. So if you have five people assigned to a squad, they get you know four bonuses to their visibility. So that's a pretty good way to go. In here for the basic formation, perform attack orders is defaulted to on because obviously you want people in a squad, people who have been training, to go out and defend when enemies show up. I also usually will check this one. Um, if gnomes that aren't militarily trained spot enemies, these guys will rush to their aid to try and keep them from getting killed. This back one here, this last one here, I don't usually turn on this one. This one is only really, only really useful in the cases where you have a dedicated group of soldiers, and then you assign the rest of your people to other squads, and you set them to avoid enemies if possible. Um, that one, that one is is kind of a niche use, but I've, I've used it in that capacity, and it works really well for keeping your non-combatants from getting hurt. Okay. So in here, we've got. Worm-like quacks, the new squad we set up. And name really doesn't matter. You can randomize the name all day long until you find a funny one, or just click in here and change it. Um, we're going with the basic formation, five basic soldiers. So what we'll do is we'll fill it with five people. Uh, let's see. Fighting nine, brawling eleven, seven nine, eight, twelve and ten. So you can see they basically all start out in kind of the same vicinity. They're all going to be between about six and six and fifteen for their fighting and brawling. Um, the fighting skill is unarmed fighting. Brawling is using non-weapon objects, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that, but I, th I think that's I think that's how it goes. Um, apparently. Apparently, I've got two people named Dooms. That's kind of an odd coincidence. Okay, so there's a couple of them that are really ahead of the pack. Uh, this guy here, Aura, is 13 and 14 for fighting and brawling, so that's a good start. And we have 13, Phil, and 12 for Doodle Fuss. Ram is 11, and I think the last person on the list was a 12. There we go. Yeah. So there's our, our five highest ones. Okay. So the warm light quacks have our five highest fighter scores. Let's take a real quick look here. Okay. This is your list of assigned skills as per your, your job listings that we, we set up previously. In uh, once upon a time, I found where the fighting and brawling definitions were. Let's see if I can find it in here. Um, I don't remember where it is. I'll have to look that up and see if I can see if I can uh, link you guys to it later. There is a spot where if you mouse over the skill. Uh, here, let's say, so we go to this guy here, skills, fighting, brawling. There is a place I found where you can actually get the tooltip that tells you which one of these is unarmed and which one of these is armed with non-weapons. Non Basically, if it doesn't fall under these other types of uses, right? So if, they're, if it's not armor, if it's not a shield, if it's not a gun or a crossbow or a sword or an axe, it's going to fall into that category. So any 
other objects that they have at hand, whether it's a bucket or a log or an orange, it's going to fall under, I think it's brawling. And fighting is their raw hand-to-hand -hand skills. Those will be what you beef up with this way of gnome configuration that I recommend. And what you'll need to do for that is set up a training yard. In order to do a training yard, where are we? Training. There goes. training bench, training grounds. We need two training dummies. Okay. Do we have a carpenter? We don't. Alright, well, we're going to need to build a carpenter to make the training dummies. So, uh, what we're set up here for is sawmills and planks, and then our carpenters back there. So, why don't we throw in a workshop and do the carpenter? Um, previously, I did mention this is pretty much your highest priority after you get your crude workbenches made because it'll make everything else that is useful out of wood. Um, anything you can make out of wood that has a function. So, sticks, planks, tables, chairs, training dummies, etc. The, the hilts for weapons, the hafts for axes, bed frames, doors, I mean, everything pretty well that you can get any sort of use out of you need a carpenter for, so you really can't build that too early. We don't have any workbench or chair built as of yet. We assign this job. Workbench, chair, plank, chisel, and this one's just doing chisels. That one's not even doing anything. Let's just uh, get this one to do planks up to... Get planks up to 12 for now. Alright, let's fast forward a little bit. And there we go, so he's making planks, so that this person can focus on making objects. <laughs> there we go, kicking out some planks. Nope, you're going to sleep in here, yeah. What's Gus doing? Gus is crafting an item. Let's see what he's crafted here yet. We will get a workbench and chair out of these guys, and then we'll be able to set up our carpenter. There's a lot of hurry up and wait in this game, so at times like this, when you've got you know, five minutes or ten minutes or however long to kill, well, they're assembling the bits and bots to put together something more complicated. Um, it's not a bad idea to scout around, check out the map, see where there's areas that are natural choke points, so that if you decide that you're going to build yourself a fortified settlement and you want just one way in, you, you know where to do it and how to do it. I highly recommend if, say, this is this is where you're going to build, you're going to build all underground in here. I would very strongly recommend putting your training grounds right here at the entrance. So in order to get into where your gnomes are accessible, the bad guys have to go by the training grounds, and then I normally station a squad in the training grounds to be training at all hours of the day. So if once I've got once I've got enough people, I'll set up a couple of squads in there running at two different times a day, and then later on I'll maybe I'll maybe set up a third squad and have them training in there. So then all of my people are trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat, so nobody's defenseless. And all of them, at some point, are keeping an eye on the entrance, so there's no bad guys sneaking in. Now, in a set setup like what we've got here, where your farm's up here and your yaks are over there, you might end up deciding to wall off a section like this here, and wall off a, a big chunk from this chasm around the hill, and then back around your yak and your farm, because this cliff here provides a nice natural area to put your back against. If that's the case, then you'll make you'll want to make an entrance somewhere for merchants to come and go, ambassadors to come and go, and your nomads to get in when they show up, and your enemies to get in, so then they don't want to do the tunneling in thing, as I warned about in my first bit. With doing it that way, Putting the training grounds right at that entrance means that this whole area is basically protected. You can have farms, 
tree farms, you can have your pastures, your orchards, whatever you're doing. Stockpiles, random shitling all over the place like this. It's all covered because the entrance is your choke point, and those guys that are going to come to try and hurt your, your gnomes, they've got to go through that choke point. So it's really it's really a good idea to do this do the setup of things. You know, think think about them before you set it up, so then you 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 maximize your your effectiveness here. Uh, what have we got? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we'll put you. If you hit R, it rotates it around. It doesn't actually affect anything. They can walk through all the fun, all the features there. So functionally, it's no different. And it's just an aesthetic. If you want them all to look the same, or you want them to you know, to be facing each other, you can put this one this way, and then the next one over can be facing that way. So then you know, like two of them can be talking while they're working. If, if you want to think about things that way, and uh, we all actually get them started on the second one because we're doing. Uh, and find job on the first one. We've got a bunch of stuff piled up and ready. With a couple of carpenters here, we'll be able to pension off the um, crude workshops really soon. Right, carpenter. Now, we needed training dummies. They're down here. Very, very bottom part of the bar. And you can make them out of whatever planks, whatever sticks, doesn't matter. We'll use pine if possible because pine is cheaper. And it doesn't artificially bloat the value of your kingdom. And we'll set that to craft to uh, two. Okay. And once they're done setting up the second carpenter, actually, you know what we can do? Let's suspend that for now. So they focus instead on making planks and sticks for the carpenter to make training dummies out of. And what we can do. We can actually think about starting our setup for the stonemason. Let's go. Let's go here. Six fifteen five by fifteen. This may not be the ideal size for it, but it's a starting point. Let's put the entrance over that way a little bit. And once our miner wakes up. Once our miner wakes up, you can join the other guy who's the other girl who's pounding away at the rock. I do love the sound effects for the game, but if you're listening to it on headset like I am right now, it gets a little loud. Okay. Got one training dummy. If ever you have a window open, so you've clicked on something to see what the floor is made of, or what the stockpile is, or what the shop designation is, if you just click and drag, like so, it automatically gets rid of that window. Because, well, this is open, it doesn't pause, but if you were to, say, click on the thing that's sitting on the floor, that pauses it. You can very quickly close that window and unpause it just by clicking and dragging, like so. So, it makes your life a little easier if you don't have to aim for that little X and click on it each time. Now, let's flatten this out. Make our stockpile here for stone. Stone. All raw stone. And from here, we want a space for our stone cutters. It's like, I don't, I don't remember for sure if I explained this, but um, they are basically going to make the stone into blocks, and that is absolutely crucial. Everything decorative or trading or functional you make out of stone uses blocks. You can't do anything with just the raw stone directly except make your crude workshop. And possibly chisels. If I remember correctly, yes. Yeah, the chisels had to have been made out of raw stone. Okay, so there's our stone pile. Let's really quickly check out what's going on up here. Okay, people are just sleeping. No big deal. Put 
we soon will have our training dummies. Ah, we do have our training dummies. Right. Let's clip some branches. After the done clipping the branches, we'll knock the trees down, put our training yard there. That'll kind of protect our stuff. But more importantly, it'll give them the opportunity to start practicing their hand to hand fighting. So they'll be able to kick some goblin ass in a little bit. Down at the bottom, training grounds, two dummies. Okay. And again, you can rotate it however you like. Not really going to affect much. And get those trees out of our way. Beautiful. Training yard can go there. Two wooden dummies later. And we have a training grounds. Now, in the training grounds, you've got three shifts you can assign people to. You assign them by squad. So, eventually, you'll want to have several squads and assign them, pardon me, assign them to different times of day. So, for example, you've got your, your morning, your afternoon, and your overnight shifts. During the rest of the day, they can sleep and do their regular jobs. If you had woodcutters and miners, for example, that normally do that, Part of the day they spend here, the rest of the day they do whatever they're supposed to be doing. Um, and that way you can have that choke point I was talking about, you can have it guarded at all times without screwing around with guard posts and patrol paths and all that jazz. You just set up your training ground there and always have somebody train. Now, what we'll want to do, it is 11 o'clock, so starting at, let's say, 2 o'clock, let's get the worm like quacks in there. And we can see them in action shortly. Meanwhile, let's unsuspend that. Also, if you right click, you can get a bunch of your commands instead of going through the menu system. So if you just want to do a, a real quick thing on one spot, like this bit of slope here, you want to get rid of it. Okay, let's uh, terrain, dig, ramp down, or mine, ramp up. That'll bind it into a ramp up. Remove ramp. There we go. So, you know, you can do a, a quick little one off job here or there if there's stuff like that. Let's go back into here. Go carpenter. Unsuspend. That means this workbench, this chisel, and the chair that is in progress should make their way over there. This guy is making train dummies. We should make two spots of dirt stuck on dirt. There we go. And okay. that all cleaned up while we're waiting. So in about ten minutes, we'll have some activity showing up here, and we'll be able to determine for sure which skill is bra which skill is uh, fighting. Random objects in which one is hand to hand with unarmed. Let those guys train up a bit. This guy's sleeping in the job. Um, I guess he's working on the chair still. Looks like. Taking those over to carpentry for me. Chair. So, you know, they prefer to work at a higher quality workstation. So now, if they can make something here, like a chair, instead of making it here, they will default to doing that. Which explains why this guy isn't making a chair, he's making planks or chisels or whatever. Okay, and here, we can designate a stone cutter. Chair, serpentine chisel, fine workbench, and 
spin you around that way and put you right there. Move back up to speed. You know, this is going to get a little bit noisy if you're watching these guys fighting, but it is kind of entertaining. Sometimes I've had them wander halfway across the map on the in the course of their fighting shift. And not just wandering across the surface, but actually wandering down halls, through rooms, past workstations, and they're fighting just anywhere and everywhere. They completely lose track of where they are and what they're doing, and they're so focused on their training. Okay. Second carpenter is just about done. And then it'll be time for our stone cutter. That stone cutter we're going to have working 24 hours a day. But I don't want to build up too many jobs in the backlog. I want people to have a chance to sleep, eat, and all that stuff. Just, there we go. She fell asleep. See so what I'm going to do. Raw stone here. Stone cutters. Stone blocks go there. And Actually, it's going to be everything stone is going in here because on the other side we'll do the stone mason. It makes all the useful stuff. And then on the third side we'll do the stone carpers from decorative trade value stuff. Um, I want this to be bigger. So 18 by 8. I'm going to start digging it yet. Carpenter here. Think so. No, okay. So, we don't have the ability to make a plank yet. Once we get blocks built and our first stone car for stone mason, just getting that backwards today, we will be able to make a saw blade and then we'll put a row of sawmills in here. And these will get converted into planks and we'll be able to laugh at them. Get rid of these slow, primitive setups over here. Now let's take a look at our little squad of people. Fighting 15. Fighting 14. Fighting 14. Fighting 13. Fighting 15. Alright, I was right when I said that fighting is the hand-to-hand -hand without random objects. So as you can see, they got better at that. By a significant amount in one shift. Once you've got them up to, once you've got them up to 20, 25, 30, anywhere in there, you can take them off shift, put the other four into, assuming you're doing this when you still have just the nine. New squad. Basic formation, and we'll pick the people who aren't in the first squad. You can tell that because the ones that are already in a squad have an S, and the ones that aren't don't have an S beside them. So you go like that. And now if you look at the tenth the, the tenth slot, basically the second squad's last position, you'll see all of them have spots. We don't have a tenth known to fill that in. We don't have any duplicates. So now the hateful letters we can set them to start training at six o'clock, let's say. And by the time you have your first invasion, beginning of summer, you guys will all be trained up to the point to the point that they'll be able to kick some green ass when the goblins show up. And I mean, it doesn't take very long. It takes two or three shifts to get them up to mid twenties or close to thirty, and then they're basically able to hold their own for a little while, unless you've got the difficulty cranked up quite a bit. In this world, uh, I believe we had the difficulty set fairly low. Because this is all about the, the learning, the process, and the and the economy, more so than figuring out what it feels like to get our asses kicked. We need a pine workbench still. These guys are cranking out the planks. Over here. We will put a 
stockpile for all things wood. And what we'll do is this one soil. Oh, there was already a stockpile there. I forgot about that. Okay, so not logs, but planks, workbench, stick, loom, bed frame, also bed frame, training dummy, bellows, wheelbarrow, bucket. And here. We can also do later on uh, statuettes and puzzle boxes. That are of wood, have them just throw them in there. Furniture that they have made out of wood. Pine chairs, orange chair. You can go through and do, do these as you start making them. They will populate, but right now, as you can see, it only populated a couple of different items under chair because I have made a pine and an Chair. But now that they've got a place to put stuff, they're going to haul it out of here. Now, instead of the workbench running at 80% efficiency, because it has four things taking up space, it'll very quickly start running at 100% efficiency. There we go. And there's nothing taking up space. There's nothing impeding their ability to make progress. That's why organization is so important in this. Makes it possible to get everything everything running smoothly and you have your assembly line of things like your logs, your sawmills, the planks, the guys that use the planks next, and then they can put the stuff that they make out of the planks back in there. Same thing with your guys who are going to be carving your trade knickknacks. They can go next over here and, you know, plug in from the end. And then you're set. Everybody's working off of the same hub. Oh, looks like we're going to get our stone bench in there. And that is the alarm telling me we've crossed the half hour mark. So tune in next week and we'll pick up with our stone bench, our stone cutter completed. If you like what you saw, hit like, throw comments in below if you if you have anything to suggest or ask, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to updates when more tutorials and all the other various segments come available.